Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? What's going on? What's up with Jay for Life TV? JP hollering at you. Hey, I got another one for you today. Uh, it's going to be um, a good one. I got Mr. Uh, Shahrazad Ali, uh, the author of The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman and The Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black Man. Okay, she wrote these books, um, The Black Man's Guide to Understand the Black Man, I mean, Black Woman, back in 89. And I think she finished writing The Black Woman Guide to Understand the Black Man in around 90. I don't know if she said it was coming out like 93. So I hadn't really checked. I just got these in the mail today. And um, I said, let me come up and start working on this. So I haven't had a chance to look at them, read through them or anything. Um, they came with some nice little, you know, little book things um so you see she has six books out so she wasn't a one-time pony or anything like that you know but the book of the black man's guide to the black woman was the most controversial so that's what we're going to discuss today now before we get started any further just um let's go ahead and Hit that subscribe button, like button, and comment at the end of the video. Uh, definitely subscribe, hit the notification bell, little button, because this is broken down into seven to eight parts. Uh, the, this interview was very long, and they stayed on topic. Um, the young lady actually did a great job doing it. No, you know, out of the way, hidden questions was thrown at her, and she was able to discuss the book in detail so that's what i like about the whole thing so i you know so i hope there's no you know copyright strikes in it or whatsoever and i can actually get this whole video out but um but hey i'm gonna try it out man see what we do and what we do all right so again subscribe like and comment and hit that notification bell so you can get the next video i am uploading videos every day all right uh, around Every day, 2.30 during the week, 4 o'clock on weekends. So a video will be out every week. So this will air. I'm going to put this uh, when I finish. I'm not going to put it out until I get all the videos done. So it'll be the next day, the next day, the next day. So it'll be seven days straight that you will see these videos if everything goes accordingly. All right. So let's get this. Uh, Miss Sharazi Ali. Sharazi. God, I cannot get her name right. Miss Sharazad Ali. Thank you. Got to get it right. As speaking with the young lady from Vibrations. Um, never heard of it. It was back in the 90s, early back in the 90s. So, it you know, it was cool. You see a young black lady on TV at that time as a host of a TV station. So, she got the interview. And let's see what's going on, man. Let's, let's rock. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Vibrations. I'm Raven Geary. Today on our program, one of the hottest properties making the talk show circuit, Shahrazad Ali. An established writer indeed, Ms. Ali is best known as the author of The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. A very controversial and, if I may say so, a very critical view of life of today's black woman. She joins us today in our studio and, of course, we'd like to welcome you today to Vibrations. Well, thank you, Raven, for inviting me. Basically, um... It's your premise that the black woman is out of sync with the natural order of things. Can you explain that? Well, it's a very sensitive subject. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly I uh, believe that I have tried to approach it from a very sensitive angle. Uh, what I have actually said is that the black woman's disrespect and rebellion against the leadership and the authority of the black man is a direct cause of the breakdown in the black family structure. Uh, it's not an attack on us as black women. It's just saying that in the breakdown of any relationship, both parties have to take responsibility. And as black women, we have been protected and insulated from any kind of examination about what our share of the responsibility is in the breakdown of the black family. Uh, my book represents the first platform, certainly, that the black man has ever had to air his grievances about the black woman because no one would ever listen to him. They have only listened to us. 
can you tell us a little bit about the book itself? Uh, what brought you to this point of having uh, to sit down and, and use your pen to write this book? Well, actually, it was my first book. In 1985, I authored a How Not to Eat Pork or Life Without the Pig. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, I was going around doing what I was calling Get Off That Hog Lectures. And uh, during my travels, I noted that uh, I would take the microscope and show people how you can't kill the trachina worm in pork by cooking it. Uh, heat was not destroying the worm, and I would show them, you know, the difference and uh, demonstrate how FDA was now using radiation to try to kill the worms in pork because cooking was not working, which is what we had always been told. And uh, during that time, a lot of black men were in agreement to get off uh, eating pork. They wanted to change their eating habits and uh, they were happy to find out some information that might possibly save their lives. But it was black women who were the most adamant, uh, who refused to change meal planning techniques, uh, seasoning food, cooking techniques. And so I I want to hit on that because I'm into fitness and um, meal planning and all that stuff. So I, I see that today and I try to talk to a lot of people about, you know, preparing certain foods and how you prepare them, how you season them, don't have to have so much season and different seasonings, you know, and you get a lot of kickback. I, I, like I told my wife, she said, well, why are you not doing things on fitness? I said, cause I'm just kind of tired dealing with people. And she's like, what? I was like, you can't get past certain people when you're talking about things with health, getting in shape, uh, losing weight and all this. Uh, our black women don't want to hear it. And a lot of black men don't want to hear it. But I get a lot of pushback from the women because, you know, they think if a man love you, he should take you for how you are and all this stuff. And I say, yeah, but if you're looking for a certain type of guy, then they're looking for a certain type of woman. Now, if you're looking for a guy who don't give a damn, oh yeah, he'll take you looking like three cans of busted biscuits, you know. But if that's the guy you want, the bomb, you know what I'm saying? The beta, I mean, or you want your alpha, a fit alpha out here doing the thing. Simple as that. You know, let's get back to it that uh hmm, it's interesting i said if we are refusing to provide the black man with the proper physical food when we know that food is what sustains life then what else are we withholding from him possibly there are some other areas emotionally spiritually you know psychologically that uh, we are affecting his behavior by what we do or what we withhold and refuse to give and uh, that led me to try to find out you know we've always heard that the black man leaves the black family uh, abandons his woman and children won't take care of the children won't work stays out all night turns into a drunk takes drugs you know we've heard a lot of negative things most of them are true but uh, I wanted to find out what happens before he gets to that point what leads up to the breakdown? We've never gone back to try to find out what happens in the relationship between the black man and a black woman that makes him go off and do all of these bad things. Uh, to assume that this is just normal, natural behavior for black men would be to assume that he is naturally bad. And I do not believe that uh, the man that God gave to us as a mate is a naturally bad person. And so I wanted to try to uh, examine what goes on with him? What, what's his side of the story? Did We've a never black examined. man ask you to write this book? Oh, no. No, no, certainly not. Uh, I think they were just as surprised as black women. <laughs> uh, many of them approached the uh, title of the book with a little uh, apprehension because they have not had a, a champion. We have never had a black woman who actually stood up and said, I'm standing up for the black man's side of the story. Uh, we know what our side is, and uh, both sides are true we have done some very dreadful things to each other. And I don't exonerate black men, which is a, kind of a, a misconception that people have. I just say that we know his side. What about our side? And we do have a side. Uh, we have adopted uh, some wrong standards. We are judging our men many times by the wrong value system. Uh, we are using his children sometimes against him. Uh, we have been told that the only benefit that a black man provides in a home is money. And if he does not give us money to take care of those kinds of financial provisions, that he has no value. And uh, what my research has proven to me is that uh, 
a black man, a, any man in any home provides much more than financial support. Uh, the man provides guidance, instruction, discipline for the children, which we sorely need in our black homes. Uh, he provides gratification, fulfillment, protection. I mean, there are so many other value, values, and these values are the ones that are missing in our children today which is why many black children are in the street out of control themselves, uh, disrespectful, don't have any regard for anyone. And most of us are scared of them, and everybody else is, because nobody has a way in to them to try to gain any control over them. So, Okay, yeah, I want to uh, stop this right here for a second. Um, what she's saying now is true. Uh, how the woman um, uses the child... Uh, they pushing the man out the house and trying to raise the child without the man being involved. All that's true. And you can, you can see it in a lot of the kids, especially the males, how they move and operate when they get older. If they're not allowing the man to be in the, the, the child's life, especially a young man, not in his life and not just discipline him, but structuring him. And that's what a lot of them don't understand. They think he's just there for discipline. No, he has to give him structure. You know, just simple as how you walk, how you talk, how you shake hands, how to tie a tie, how to wear your clothes. All that comes from that man teaching him. Everything is not about discipline. And when you don't have that in the household, your child grows up. Now he's talking to the woman because he because the mothers allow him to talk to her any kind of way because y'all become best friends you make him the 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 man of the house when he's 12 that's the dumbest thing i ever heard in my life and like i told this one girl she was always going on facebook posting how her and her 10 year old going on a date they going to the movies we already scheduled this weekend. We going to do this. We going to do that. And when I ran into her one day and she was talking about, you know, she want me to do a good guy and all this. Do I know anyone? I said, well, the first thing I do is stop going on Facebook talking about dating your son. And she just looked at me all crazy. I said, yeah. I said, um, men are looking at that. And they're like, well, I don't have time to deal with that. And she want to, you know take her son everywhere we go or she one of those oh my son comes first this this and this of course your kid comes first but we're trying to have a relationship which means you got to move the kid to the side for a minute to have some type of relationship that don't mean you don't care about your child but you have to do these things so it, it's crazy out here i mean it's just crazy and it, it doesn't make sense so Let's get to this, uh, the rest of this interview for this part, for this will be part one, and uh, I'll continue on with the rest of them the following days. They return certain clearly defined gender responsibilities for black men and black women in running a home and a relationship will help us to produce a better child. And if we produce a better child, certainly we'll have a better future and a better nation. And saying all of this and as calling yourself a champion and, and uh, having, if I may say, the courage to write this book uh, and stand by it, you've caused a stir. This book is very yeah. controversial. What uh, are you hearing from public reaction? Well, I, I don't think that it's an issue among black women about whether or not the book is true or not the issue is that I was not supposed to tell these are inside secrets and things that we have never uh, let our men know about and many times we what is that we say uh, he can't handle me well many times he can't handle us because he doesn't know what it is he's trying to handle he and that was I'm glad she hit that we heard this a lot guys I know every guy around that has a little age on him have heard this and the woman always say, when the men don't want to deal with their attitude, oh, he can't handle a strong woman. No, it's to a point where we are tired of all that, all that, yeah, 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 all this. We, we're tired of it. And so if that's all you have to offer, then we're going to go somewhere else. Simple as that. We're not going to stick around and hear that shit just and your attitude and all this other stuff 
and you think that's where it's supposed to be. That I mean, that's not meaning you're strong. And the crazy thing, some of you are very educated. You have really nice, you know, high paying jobs and you still act this way with your man. You'll go to work and be around all these other people and white people and act totally different. Get home and around your people. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what they get. And then you're wondering why with all this education, this high power, you know, high uh, job that you have, high paying job you have, that you can't get a man. Because it has nothing to do with education and jobs have nothing to do with relationships. And I always said this, and uh, my wife used to look at me a little different about it when I used to say it all the time, but I was like, education has nothing to do with relationships. And she was like, what? I said, it don't. I said, look, all these smart women out here struggle to keep a relationship. And then she had to think about it. So, so let's keep moving. I don't want to talk too much. He doesn't understand what motivates us. We have become very adept, many of us, as being able to uh, do something right in front of his eyes and then convince him that that's not what he really saw at all and that it didn't happen. Do you and so we've kept him kind of confused. Excuse me. Do you realize that there are many bookstores and in particular black bookstores that have refused to carry the black man's guide to understanding the black no, woman? I think that that's been overblown. Uh, right now, the book is carried in over 5,000 bookstores here in this country and about 2,000 abroad. The book is becoming a bestseller in London. And to date, we only know of two bookstores in the entire country who refuse to carry the book. May I tell you that there is at least well, one in Tallahassee. There, there may be, but and the, it's their the, loss the, if the, they're doing that. <laughs> the response we got from that book owner was that your book had nothing, absolutely nothing constructive. Was that a woman who gave say. you those comments? Yes, it was. Oh, how surprising. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the things that seem yeah. to be upsetting people you know, that you people know, are talking uh, about. It's crazy how one store by a woman that's probably black had an issue with it and refused to sell it in her store it wasn't constructive because i guarantee you it was talking about someone like her the only way you can get offended by something if it's something that you do you don't get offended by things that people talk about unless it's something about you I don't get mad every time you talk about black men though, beating on women and all this and I get defensive because hell I don't beat them so I don't believe in putting my hands on women but like she said and the girl tried to say um, it's not being sold in America but it's selling well at the time in America and becoming a bestseller overseas so the book is doing well and people are getting the book and reading the book I've seen the comments before I even did this. A lot of couples have the book, giving it to their kids, their boys especially, having them read it. The ones that are about to get married, have the couples to read it, understand it. And there's nothing wrong with that. You read about everything else, read about relationships and how to handle each other. Just simple. Certainly have been a lot of things taken out of context. Uh, anyone who's ever looked at me or seen you know, witness some of the talk shows, uh -huh. they actually uh, explore a lot of issues. They take them out of context. They want to sensationalize them to build up their ratings to have a good show. So I really appreciate this opportunity to just sit down and have a fireside chat about the book. Well, I'm glad you Without you're here. all the fireworks and everything. Um, you say black women, and I quote you as saying, nag, nag, yes, nag. And we, that we, we are do. essentially responsible for pushing our men away by doing uh, a so. A lot of times uh, we, we take a position because of our own emo emotional mechanisms. Uh, we harass our men too much. We nag our men too much. And we keep his mind and his head so bundled up and bogged down with all of our personal idiosyncrasies about our day-to-day -day personal relationship with him that a lot of times we don't free his mind up to go out and to plan sanely for our future and for the future of our children. Uh, many of them come to us every day and they almost have to do a wind test. They don't know what's going on. They don't know who they're going to meet because we have a lot of uh, reactions. Uh, we tend to think as black women that a successful relationship and one where we're happy is one where everything goes our way 
and the first time it goes another kind of a way, then we go into hell, turmoil in our brain, and we start deciding, oh, I've got terrible problems with this man. Uh, he won't do what I want him to do. When our men have a side, we let, were, uh, let me give that side yeah, according you know, to Shahrazad Ali, okay? <laughs> you say in your book, okay, let's and I'm to quoting it. Come you, on. Okay. <laughs> the black man in America is the only male on earth, including every continent, who is disrespected by the women in his nation. That's true. This situation does not exist any place else among the billions of people inhabiting our planet except here in America. That's right. The other black men, the yellow men, the red men, the brown men, and the white men are all honored and respected by their respective nations. All other women recognize and accept that the man is the authority, the ruler, and the leader. Only here in the United States, in the black nation, scattered throughout the United States, excuse me, rather, is the black man neglected. That's pretty powerful. And it's absolutely true. Uh, we have been displaced. A lot of us don't really understand what slavery actually did to us and how much psychological trauma it did to us regarding what our proper roles are with each other, uh, what our responsibilities are as man and woman in our various communities and relationships. Uh, we have never been debriefed from slavery. Not really. We have just, you know, we know we had that history, but we don't know how it affected us. We don't know how much of our actual culture we lost how much of our ideas have, uh, were taken from us. We know that our religion was taken from us. We know that our names were taken from us. But we don't know how many other standards of day-to-day -day life have been removed. And while we have adopted the American way of doing things, uh, they have not worked for us because we have a very special situation. We are not the same as everyone else. And a lot of the people who want us to pretend that slavery didn't exist or to forget about it, they've never been a slave. So they don't know what we're going through. They don't know what this has done to us. Uh, it has made us as black women and insecure. Why not, well, okay, uh, well, that's yeah. true. Why not take up for us? Why not well, write something we've that says we need We've had everybody that. to take up for, for us, and uh, we've always had books about black women, how great and how strong we are, and we are that. I'm just... Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and end this one out here. Um, it's amazing how what she says comes back now in 2021 we're seeing the things that she discussed back in 1990 so what are we doing what's going on so like i said this is uh, a great interview it continues uh broke it down in sections um so we will start uh part two in the next one so make sure you click over to the next one um i'm gonna end it here and pick it back up where the interview stopped and um, you just got, got to keep into it, man. So that means you got to subscribe, um, hit that notification bell. So when the video do pop up, you'll get the notification, like, and comment. And uh, it's very interesting. I think a lot of our black people need to watch it. Um, if you don't get the book, at least watch this part that explains, I mean, the, the interview, but because it explains a lot of what people never gave her the chance to say so let's just uh pay attention watch it and see what she says about it and with that being said this what's up with jay for life tv and i'm out of here to the next one on to part two see ya <laughs>